What's up guys, my name is Brock. You're watching The Modest Man and today we're talking about how to travel in comfort and style. All right, there's a lot of advice out there on the internet about what you should wear while you're traveling, especially when you're flying and navigating the airport. And a lot of people think that you should dress up when you travel. Uh, I've even heard people say that you should wear a suit, and if you wear a suit that you, know, you might get upgraded to a first class seat for free. Well, I don't know about that. When I'm traveling, my number one priority is comfort. And you know, I wanna feel good, I wanna be comfortable throughout the entire experience, I wanna get through the airport quickly, and if I can look good while I'm doing that, that's great, that's a bonus. I don't think you should have to look like Don Draper uh, on a flight from LA to New York sitting first class. You know, but I think you also shouldn't look like the college kid flying home for spring break. The thing is, when I'm at the airport, more often than not, most of the guys I see look more like the college kid. You know, I see guys wearing gym shorts and sweatpants, carrying backpacks, wearing baseball caps and you know, flip-flops. I think that's not acceptable. You know, I think if you wanna look good and you, you care about your appearance, you care about the impression you're making on other people, I think you should try to step it up. And I think there's a sweet spot between Don Draper and College Kid that you should be aiming for. My go-to getup is casual pants, jeans or chinos, comfortable shirt, not a t-shirt, but like a polo or a button-up, a couple of nice accessories and some handsome luggage. Just with that getup, I'm already a couple of notches above most of the other guys at the airport in terms of style. So if you're like me and you care first and foremost about comfort, but you also wanna look good while you're traveling, pay attention to these five tips. Tip number one, accessorize. If you're gonna be comfortable and you're gonna be wearing a, a relatively simple outfit like jeans and a polo shirt or something like that, the best way to spruce up an outfit that could otherwise be kind of boring is to add a couple of cool, tasteful accessories. And in my opinion, the best accessory for traveling is a wristwatch. Now, watches are great uh, for two reasons. First of all, if you're wearing especially a watch that is unique, uh, people are gonna notice it and they're gonna comment on it. Uh, so for example, this watch from Original Grain uh, is very unique because it's got this really thin wooden bezel that's made from all natural wood. So it's one of a kind because no two pieces of wood are the same. It's got an Italian leather band, Japanese quartz movement. I like their minimalist collection because unlike a lot of wooden watches, it's sleek, low profile, really thin, really subtle. It's not like all chunky and oversized. It's a great watch for a great price and you can get a special discount. So check the description for more info. The second reason I love wearing watches is they're just so practical. So when you're flying, oftentimes you're crossing time zones. You're flying into a different time zone. Your phone doesn't work when you're 30,000 feet up and it can take a while to update to the new time zone. So what I like to do is right when I sit down on the plane, I set my watch to the new time zone or to the time of the place that I'm flying to. And that way when I'm up in the air, if there's any delays or if anything happens, I always know what time it is at my destination. Now, if you're thinking, oh, well, if I wear a watch or a belt or any other accessory, it's just one more thing to deal with during the security line. I hear you, but let's be honest. It's not that hard to take off your watch, put it in a little bin and then put it back on. So tip number one, accessorize. Tip number two, no t-shirts. Now listen, I'm not saying a high quality fitted v-neck can't be a good look while you're traveling. I just prefer to step it up one notch in terms of style and formality with a polo shirt or a fitted casual button up like this one. Polo shirts and button up shirts are just as comfortable as t-shirts, but they just look a little more polished and thoughtful. So skip the graphic tees, skip the old baggy t-shirts, throw on a polo shirt or a casual button up. Tip number three, no shorts. Okay, shorts are inherently very, very casual. And in my opinion, they're too casual for travel, especially for airline travel. Now listen, if you're island hopping around the Caribbean, flying on those tiny 12-seater planes, fine, wear shorts and a Hawaiian shirt. But if you're traveling, you know, like most of us do, just domestically or internationally, whatever, uh, wear pants. Pants are gonna look better, I think they're a lot more comfortable if you're sitting on one of those airline seats for hours. They also offer full coverage uh, on your legs because sometimes it can get oddly cold on an airplane. So tip number three, skip the shorts, wear pants. Tip number four, easy on and off shoes. So I'm talking about loafers, boat shoes, Chelsea boots, 
or sneakers that are easy to slip on and off without untying and then tying again. Now, you want to wear these shoes that are easy to get on and off because obviously it makes the security line a lot less stressful and more streamlined for you, especially if it's crowded. A little pro tip, what I like to do, especially if it's the summertime and it's really hot, I like to do the no sock look, but I don't actually want to wear no socks because I don't want to stand barefoot in that security line waiting to go through the body scanner. So I recommend wearing no show socks. That way you can still achieve the sockless look and show some ankle, but your feet will be covered and protected. So tip number four, easy on and off shoes. Tip number five, get some decent luggage. I'm not talking about designer stuff. It doesn't have to be expensive, but don't carry a backpack or your gym bag around the airport. So what I usually do is I have a, a large carry-on, uh, which is like a roller, uh, and then I have like a messenger bag that I can keep my laptop in and everything else that I wanna actually have access to on the plane in my seat. Some snacks, headphones, you know, an extra charger, Kindle, stuff like that. You know, in my opinion, it makes sense to spend a little money on luggage and invest in something high quality. It's gonna last a lot longer. It's gonna be easier to use. The handle won't get jammed up. The zipper won't break. It won't get damaged when it's getting tossed around by security and the luggage handlers, because you better believe they're not handling those bags gently. So tip number five, invest in some decent luggage. And a quick bonus tip, give yourself plenty of time when you're flying. You know, we've all been there where you're running to your gate, you know, you're sweating through your clothes, you're stressed out. It's not a good look, it doesn't feel good. Uh, so give yourself plenty of time at the airport. And you know, it's not that bad. If you show up an hour early, you have an hour to kill, get some work done on your laptop, you know, call someone you haven't talked to in a while, or just get a coffee, get a beer, and just people watch. But it's much better to have a little bit of extra time at the airport than to have not enough time. So I hope these tips help you travel in comfort and style. Big thanks again to Original Grain for sponsoring this video. Go check out their watches. There's a link down in the description. And if you have any questions or comments about any of this, please leave a comment down below. And until next time, stay stylish.